Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, I'm Julia and today I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful maxi dress. So the dress features a stylish tie at the neck and a stunning open back. Additionally, there is a nice slit on the side seam. In this tutorial, I will guide you step by step through the sewing process. If you love this dress and want to make your own, the pattern is available in my Etsy shop. You will find the link in the description below. To get started, here is what you will need. Approximately 3 meters of fabric, matching thread, an invisible zipper, fusible interlining tape, diagonal, and straight grain, and of course, tie dress pattern. The first step in making the dress is to cut out the butter pieces from the main fabric. The butter is designed to be cut on the bias. The pieces you need to cut out include the front panel, back panel, front and back lining, and necktie. Layer fabric pieces flat with the wrong side facing up. Before placing the interfacing tape, ensure that the front and back panels of your garment align with the pattern correctly. It's important not to stretch the fabric while fusing the interfacing. Instead, adjust the tape to fit the panel accurately. Place the diagonal interfacing tape with the fusible side onto the wrong side of the fabric. Align it with the neckline, the front underarm edge and the back edge. Ensure that the edges of the interfacing and the fabric match up. Once the interfacing is securely fused, you can trim any excess interfacing that extends beyond the fabric edges. Fold the fabric along the marked middle line of the tart, bringing the right sides together. When pinning, be sure that pins accurately follow the tart lines on both sides. Add an extra pin at the tart tips at the right angle to the fabric. Begin sewing with a straight stitch at the standard length of 2.5mm from the widest part of the dart, which is the outer edge. Sew inwards towards the dart's point. As you proceed, gently curve the stitching to match your desired curve lane. Adjust the stitching length to 1.5 to 2mm while continuing to stitch off the edge. Avoid back stitching when you reach the end of the dart point. Instead, leave a long tail of threads. To secure the threads at the end of the dart, carefully knot the tail threads, ensuring not to pull the knot too tight to prevent fabric puckering. To make your darts neat and smooth, use an iron. Start by ironing the wrong side of the fabric from darts and point to the outer edge. Make sure that darts edge lines up with the outer edge. Then. Iron the right side of the fabric using a glow or fabric as a buffer between the garment and the iron. Now repeat the steps of making a dart for the lining front panel. Align interfacing tape with the grain line on the zipper edge. Before fusing, fold the dart on the pattern paper. Match it with the fabric to ensure both lines are aligned. This step ensures the fabric is stabilized for the zipper installation, so it's important to fuse the tape accurately. To fuse the top properly, press it from the top edge to 2 cm above the zipper notch. You can also fuse 3 to 4 cm below the top edge. Make sure that you don't stretch a fabric while fusing the tape. Here I am playing the tape for the back zipper edge. Thank you. 
overlock the edges of the front piece, back piece and the lining for both pieces. Ensure you don't stir the fabrics while overlocking. Press the overlock seams, this stabilizes all the finished edges. Lay the dress panel on the front panel with the right sides facing each other. In one side from the top notch to the slit notch. You can adjust the slit start position later for the best fit. You can also sew to the end of the seam if you prefer to not have a slit. Also, ensure you align all the notches at the knee, hips and waist. Afterward, adjust the fabric between these notches. Here I'm checking if everything has been pinned correctly. Pin the other side where the zipper will be from the top edge to the tire point. Leave a space for the zipper and continue pinning 2 cm below the zipper notch to the end. Check the zipper hole alignment to ensure the fabrics haven't shifted. This step is crucial for the correct installation of the zipper since the fabric can easily stretch due to being cut on the bias. On the back pattern there is a notch indicating where the zipper should be placed. begins 2 cm below the zipper notch. The next step is to place the back lining panel on top of the front lining panel with the right sides together. Pin one side, the zipper side, from the top edge to the dart and the other side from the top edge to the end. Ensure the sides are opposite to those of the main dress fabric so the lining appears mirrored. Sew along the edge, keeping a 1 cm seam allowance. Remember to start sewing 2 cm below the zipper notch.
Here I'm sewing the side that has a slit. Sew along the both edges of the lining, keeping a 1cm seam allowance. Now press the seam open of the dress and the lining. Now finish the bottom edge of the lining with an overlock stitch. Press the overlock edge. Fold the edge inward by about 6 mm depending on the width of the fabric and then press again. Top stitch approximately 5 mm from the edge, then press again the bottom hem. With the lining right out out and the dress inside out, insert the dress into the lining so the right sides face each other. Pin the armhole and back edges, leaving the necklace open. Align all the notches including the side seam, center back edge and the top of the armhole. Sew with a 1 cm seam allowance, starting from the one side of the armhole going through the back line and ending at the other side of the armhole.
cut away any extra fabric along the side seams. Turn the lining to the inside of the dress. Top stitch 1 mm from the line's edge adjoining the dress and the lining on the right side of the lining. From the wrong side of the garment, press the armholes lines and back line towards the lining. Turn the lining inside out again and notch around the back line and arm edge for a better fit. Fold the necktie in half length ways with right sides together. Pin it, leaving the neckline hole open. You can place pins vertically at the notches for the neckline. you along the necktie using a 1 cm seam allowance and secure the neckline hole with a back stitch. Press the tie, then fold and press the seam allowance of the neckline hole by 1 cm. Now, trim the corners of the seam allowances.
Using a stick or similar tool, poke out the corners and turn the tie right side out through the open hole in the middle. Repeat for the other side. Using a needle, push the corners towards the edge. Then press it and with your fingers bring the seam as close to the edge as you can. The side you have just pressed will be the left side. Align the dress neckline with the lining and stitch closely about 2-5 to mm from the edge. Place the necktie on the dress front with right sides together and pin it. Sew one centimeter from the edge, ensuring you backstitch at the beginning and the end. Here you can see how the necktie is sewn to the dress. Press the necktie on the dress front ensuring to place a piece of fabric between the iron and dress. Direct the seam allowance upwards. Fold over the previously pressed seam allowance to hide the stitches, pin in place. You can machine stitch or choose to use a hand stitch. For a cleaner fish without visible stitching, I chose the second option.
Using a needle and thread, create an invisible hand stitch, joining the neckline to dress spacing. Press the necktie from the inside for a neat finish. Place the zipper face down on the right side of the fabric along the edge. The seam allowance is 1 cm so place the zip teeth 1 cm from the side seam edge. The top of the zipper should align with the point where the seam ends. Pin the zipper up to the zipper notch. Ensure you pin the zipper at the zip notch, which should be 2 cm above the side seam. You can see here that the top of the zipper aligns with the point where the seam ends. Here is the gap between the side seam and the end of the zipper. Next, hand stitch near the zipper stitch and remove the pins. Pin the opposite side of the zipper in place. When pinning, make sure that both the top and bottom ends of the zipper are properly aligned. It's important the top edges of the zipper are even. Sew the side by hand as well.
zip it up and check if it's been hand stitched accurately. Make a supporting seam with the standard foot. Move the needle to the far left, sew in the zip up to the notch. Replace the sewing machine foot with a zipper foot. Align the position of the needle so that is in the middle of the hole. Undo the zip and carefully undo the coil to the left and place it under the foot. Sew the zip to the notch and then do the same for the other side of the zip. Now you can remove the hand stitching on both sides of the zipper. The next step is to pin the seam below the zip. So make sure that the zip tip is on the wrong side of the fabric. Now change the foot on the sewing machine to the standard one and sew the seam from the previously made stitch 2 cm under the zip notch up to the zip. So make sure that the seam is a continuation, that the seam line meets with the zipper line. Press the zipper on the right side and on the inside. Also, press the seam open under the zipper. Now I would like to show you how to trim the zip tape. So measure 4 cm from the sewn end of the zipper and cut the zip tip. Cut a strip of fabric approximately 5 cm wide, lay the zipper on it, mark 1 cm to the side of the zipper and then trim the fabric so it's about 1 cm wider on both sides. Align the bottom edges of the fabric and zipper tape. Fold the fabric around the sides of the zipper tape and pin. Sew around 6 mm from the edge, make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. Pull the fabric down, pulling it tightly to create a sharp. Press both sides of the fabric. Then, fold up the bottom edge and press. 
fold it once more time, aligning the bottom fold with the top edge of the fabric. Press this fold and pin in place. Stitch along the fabric's edge, ensuring the top and sides edges align properly. For a polished look, give it a final press. Put the thread and the lining together. Slightly, turn the lining inside out to get to the space between the dress and the lining. Hold the seams together and pin it. Sew through from the top point of the slit to the bottom. Then repeat the same process for the other side. The next step is to press the lining on the side of the zipper. It is important that the lining does not extend beyond the dress. To achieve this, on one side seam of the dress pin the lining to the seam allowance and stitch. Repeat this step for the opposite side seam. At this stage, I recommend trying on the dress to determine where the slit should start and to finalize the dress length. Once you have decided, fold and press the slit seam inward approximately 1 cm. Top stitch about 5 mm from the edge and press again. Before the final fitting and hemming, let the garment hang for 24 hours. Since the dress was cut on the bias, it has a tendency to stretch. Allowing it to hang ensures that the fabric settles and stretches naturally. Once you determine the desired lane, finish the bottom edge of the dress with an overlock stitch. Then press the overlock edge Fold the edge inward by about 6 mm depending on the width of the fabric and then press again. Top stitch approximately 5 mm from the edge adjusting based on the width of your overlock.
give the final press to the bottom hem. And voila, you have crafted a beautiful dress. If you found this tutorial helpful, please hit that subscribe button for more sewing fun. And for the butter or other designs, check out my Etsy shop. Thanks for joining me today and happy sewing!